So this wasn't the one I was thinking of, but this one looks cool. It's This is similar, though. See how all the numbers up here and stuff? I mean, it's so hard to see, especially if you're ripping down the road and you want to look down at your gauge quick. It's going to be hard to focus on what you need to see. It's hard enough on regular gauges. So that's why I like the separate full gauges. It was like I was trying to get that green look. That's why I went with the boost gauge. But, um, you know, so it can match the green back here. And I, I've seen some SVT gauges, the ones, the older ones, that are split with the green on top and bottom. I'll try and get a picture. It's very hard to see here. This is actually the exact uh, pot I bought. I bought it off Dustin. I didn't want his gauges, though. It's hard to even read these. Those are on in the daytime. But these gr these light up green, so I'm like, oh, those are an option, too. But I don't like how they're split like that with the numbers. I mean, I get some people like it. I'm just not a fan. I like the individual gauges that read out. Yeah, I got the picture of that gauge to reference off Merchant SVT's page. Just listen to this thing for a second. Whew. A beast. So yeah, my only concern working with these type of pods is because it's really hard to get the, uh, you can't get a mounting bracket in them. And I'm pretty sure the, the bore, the size on the pod is like a little bit bigger, so these will fit loose. So I'm either going to have to add a little adhesive or something to get these to stick in there. I'll show you what I mean. This is just my binder. I've been trying to keep like all the records since I got this car, like from April, just all the things I did to it for, I mean, if I ever get rid of it or if my son has it. I just got a notification the boost gauge uh, is in. Let's just get into it. What brand gauge did I get? Ta-da! <laughs> oh, I love not caring what people think about me. No, for real. I mean, this gauge probably cost me like 50, 60 bucks. I know when they first came out years ago, they were a little more. But that just shows a good company when the things come down in price over time. I mean, they're not trying to make a profit. And they put out a really good product. The only reason I bought this brand, well, for one, I love the way it looks. I love the white face, and I like that you can change it to green when it lights up. But, um... I used these as I was younger. I mean, I've used tons, tons of brands of gauges, you know, from the auto meter when they were like first coming out and and I've never had bad luck with these. And they always come quick, they ship quick, they work great and they look great. So why am I going to spend hundreds of dollars on something else just because everyone says, no, get this one, it's the best. Nice thing about it, they give you the options usually on these to change it to whatever color you want to match your car. And then it kind of saves it in its memory until you, like, disconnect the battery or something. Yeah, there's your options right there. Yeah, look at they gave you all this hose, which I don't use their hose. This looks better than what they used to use in 2006 when I used to use it. They had this other hose, and when it would go into vacuum, it would just, like, suck the hose flat. <laughs> but I won't use that anyway. Yeah, they give all these extra pieces and... Like a T, if you need to T into your boost source, clamps. I mean, it's a good company. Yeah, the T is interesting. It's got this little bushing that tapers the hole down. I'm assuming that would go towards your gauge. I'm not sure why they taper that down there. 
maybe to relieve the pressure from the gauge. So they do have a one year warranty from your purchase date. As long as you have the receipt, they'll fix or replace. They also come with nice detailed instructions if people need it. We will not be using it. I shouldn't say we shouldn't be using it. We're gonna be using this part. We just need to know what the wires mean. So I'll have to check, but it looks like yellow. We might have to run our own wire for that because I need a constant. That's for the memory of the gauge. One last thing. I think I have enough length here and here, and I can put the hose on this end so I can set this in the gauge where I need it. So if I need to add a little adhesive, I can do that first and let it sit for a little bit. I might need to do that. The only thing is this needs a plug-in. So I might, how considering how many wires this has, I don't know, I'm gonna have to look, but I might cut that wire and add connectors to one side so I can easily disconnect the whole gauge pod if I need to in the future without trying to have to squeeze in here and try and unplug this because this is a pain in the butt. This was hard to unplug when it was in that other gauge pod. So I'm going to set it up so it's more simple for myself. So just like I thought, the hose is a very tight fit on there. So I'm going to heat this up a little bit so I can slip it over. Didn't feel like digging out the heat gun, but it's on there. It's on pretty far. This thing sticks out a good amount. Okay, so I got plenty of slack on that plug piece to cut. So I can make it, I wanna make the splice in here when I do uh, have to reconnect it. Just with some flat end connectors, push them together. But had to do it. <laughs> So yeah, the boost gauge actually fits tight. Just gotta get the angle. Yeah, see as where this one fits very loose. So what I did here is take a very thin uh, eighth inch tape and I went around it a couple times and I'm just gonna check the snugness. And after the snugness is good, I'm gonna put a tiny little bit of this ultra black that stuff's great i use it on a lot of things right behind the line very fine so it's just gonna make it nice so this was actually too much <laughs> i'm gonna have to take some so one ring around it was enough i'm gonna add a little bit of the sealant shove it in there and let it dry for a couple hours just to make it it's nice out today so put it outside it'll dry a little quicker just be sure to put it in the shade because any plastic will fade in the strix so i managed to find some plugs for the wideband so i put two on here opposite ones so you can't mess them up i ran out of shrink tube so i had to use what i had it's good enough and then these are tied together. These are for the two gauges. That's for the illumination, the ground, steady power, and something else. But it's all gonna be plug and play, so when I take this off ever, it's easy. I can just unplug everything, including this. Oh, I feel so stupid. I found the black trim for this watching a movie. Now I decided I'm gonna force this out of here since I'm doing the install tomorrow. It's getting dark out. I'll just reset it with the new, new uh, bezel tonight. It'll look so much better if it was matching black bezel with the white face. So yeah, it was in there nice and snug, but I got it out, replaced it. It's gonna look way nicer. I don't know how I didn't think of this before. Much better. So it's a new day. Well, the sun was out, sort of. So I finished all this last night. This thing is set to go. It's neat, it's all plug and play. I made a wire with a fuse. 
that's going to be for the constant power to run into the car because I don't think I have a constant power. And I'm not going to reuse any of the wires that are already run, like the fuel uh, sender wires, since I'm not really using that, but I'm just going to keep that in place just in case. <laughs> Chance of rain, so I might have to uh, pull it in quick while we do this, but not a big deal. Oh, I'm OCD. I'll start cleaning the carpet by hand. <laughs> Anyways, so I got these wires because it's really tight to pull through. I'm going to use this as a pull wire. I'm going to pull some through, tape the new wire on, pull it in. I'm gonna also try and find out what uh, that thing is for. It's turned all the way down. I have no idea what it is. So many wires. My wires go through right in there. It's hard to see. Right there. All right, so that worked out. Pulled through nicely. Uh, just gonna cut the wire off of the taped part. Sorry for the length of the video. I'm gonna try to make it short, but I got perfect length here to get up where I need. And out here I have just enough. The wire is routed. I got a little jacket on the part that goes around the metal here. I mean, just taking precaution to the fuse. I'm probably just going to mount it to here for now to be quick. I'm supposed to get my kid from school at 2.40 and it's almost 2.30. And let's see if I can have my mom do it because this isn't going to be done. And I mean, obviously I could just throw it back together and stuff and how it was and it'll work, but I want to figure out what this stuff is. I mean, there's a ton of wires I'm not using anymore, just hanging here. Wow, so I looked like way under and I found the vacuum tee. I don't know if this will show it. I'm just kind of moving it up under the car. It goes like all the way over here and then there's a tee I found over near the radio. Ugh, so the white wire is just going into this thing. Man, who the heck did this crap? So I made a quick post in the meantime, because that white wire in line goes to the brown wire here. So I need to know what the brown wire is, because it went to the gauges here that I wasn't using before. I'm, I'm assuming it's a dimmer. But my question is, why didn't they hook it up to the dimmer here? Because honestly, I don't even think I need a dimmer for this setup. I just need the uh, the constant power and accessory. All right, so the red wires that tie in right here, one's coiled up and one's right here. That's for the, uh, the accessory when you turn the key on. So I'll be able to take all this out, which is good. Everything's tidied up. This is the wire for the wide band i'm gonna cut into it and add the two plugs then i'll add the spade connectors on here and we'll be done so this is my setup to do that just to keep the car closed up and do my wiring away from stuff and not a confined space here are just a few examples just a couple of weeks ago so it ain't raining anymore, but I did it in here. I already made the connections, heat shrinked them for the three plugins there. And I got these all set to plugs. So yeah, there's my feet. So yeah, we're all set now. We're all set to plug these things in. Let's go get the gauges. Okay, pods out here. Time to put it in.
All right, so it's all plugged in. I figured out this is the light trigger and that is the dimmer switch down there. I don't know why that's how they did it. Well, that wasn't fun trying to stuff all the wires up in there. This is on. It'll look better at night when you can see all the green started up. Finally got my title today. I think it's so lame that it doesn't say Cobra anywhere on it. it. Just says Ford Mustang Coupe. It could be a V6 for all anyone thinks. <clears throat> there it is. Gauges. This thing pulls a lot of vacuum. Turn the lights on. So you can switch the colors too to match your car. It's got a bunch of colors. Yeah, that's it guys. Thanks for watching. I didn't want to make this too long. I'm going to see how short I can get it for you. It's just a gauge install. Thanks for watching guys. Quick nighttime shot because I'm putting it away. The camera makes these gauges here look more blue, <laughs> but it really is green in real life.